Good morning, everyone. Father John Camus, uh, St. John Baptiste Church, corner of 76th Street and Lexington Avenue. And today we're gathering to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So to prepare ourselves to listen to the Word of God, let's open our hearts and invoke the Spirit to be with us, to guide us. Lord Jesus, you suffered and died to bring us salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of life for all who believe in you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we look forward with hope to our resurrection, for you have made us your sons and daughters. So we ask this through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So today I'm going to be just looking at the gospel reading that we have. Uh, it's the second half of a very important, very beautiful, uh, and rather unique story of the resurrection in the New Testament. It's taken from the Gospel of Luke, and uh, it, there's only one little mention of this. I believe it's in the Gospel of Mark, where it's just uh, commented that two disciples leaving Jerusalem uh, met up with the Lord Jesus after the resurrection. It just says, it's very simple, that's all it says. So this is the story behind that little remark. I'm going to be reading the second half of the story, and uh, I'll brief you in on the first half of the story when I begin my reflection. So here's the story that we hear today, the part that we hear. So the two disciples, the one who were fleeing Jerusalem to go to Emmaus, returned to Jerusalem, and they go to the upper room. It says, the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. Now while they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is truly I. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he said to them, do you have anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of baked fish and he took it, ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, this, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of this. Okay, so that's the part of the story that we read today. But going back to the beginning, it's Sunday, it's the day of the resurrection. Uh, it's the day that people are seeing the risen Lord. They don't know what to do about it. Uh, some believe it, some don't. Uh, some are believed when they talk about it, some aren't. But these two disciples are fleeing and they're fleeing Jerusalem because they're afraid, like all the others that are staying in Jerusalem. They're hiding in the upper room. They're afraid of the religious authorities. Jesus was arrested. They might also be arrested. So, so that fear is there. So these two disciples are not only fearful, they're despondent. They had put all their hope in Jesus that he was the Messiah. 
and they're uh, they're uh, going over and over what what did he do uh, what happened why was he killed uh, all that they're just going over and over again as they're walking along the road and as was common in those days uh, people would group together when they walked on roads for safety so uh, all of a sudden a man comes up to them and you know enters the conversation so what are you guys talking about and they tell him are you the only person in Jerusalem that doesn't know what took place here these last few days and he says no what things and they go on how Jesus was a prophet we believed he was the Messiah we had put our hopes in him uh, but the religious leaders were against him and they had him crucified and this is the third day since his death and there are people saying that he rose from the dead so they, they tell them all that. And he engages them in a lengthy conversation as they walk along the road. And he says to them, you know, you're foolish. Uh, haven't you read your scriptures? You're Jews, you've been reading the scriptures your entire lives. The Psalms, the prophets, all the books. They all have all these prophecies about the Messiah. Prophecies that the Messiah would suffer, that the Messiah would die that the Messiah would carry the sins of the people. All that's in there, and that's what he teaches them. He goes through the scriptures going through that. It's evening time, uh, eventually, and they say to, to the, this man, uh, this is where we're staying. Would you like to stay with us tonight, have dinner with us? And he does. They're eating as usual. Uh, then he, and they don't recognize Jesus this whole time, right? They don't know who he is. They're, uh, they're blocked from seeing him. But when they sit down to eat, evidently he begins to act and do the things he did when he was with them. And he took the bread, he broke it, he gave it to them. Uh, and that's when their eyes were opened. And they said, it, it's Jesus. And by the second their eyes are opened, he's vanished from their sight. So they go back to Jerusalem. That's where our story picks up. That's what I read. They go back to the upper room. Everyone is frightened, they're hiding. Uh, they knock on the door, they let them in, whatever. Uh, they tell them what happened. Uh, they're not really believing them at all. Uh, other women came and said that they had seen Jesus. They, they weren't believed either. Uh, you know, you can, you can understand that. Uh, but then again, the way it had happened the week before when Jesus appeared to the same group, he appeared again, just appeared in their midst. And uh, it happens while the two disciples are describing what took place. Then he does exactly the same thing for the entire group. He begins to break open the scriptures, to tell them about the Psalms and the prophets, things they should listen to uh, in their scriptures in the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament. Right? So he's laying that out for them. He's enlightening their minds how to read this ancient scripture. God's been talking to the Jewish people for 2,000 years. You know, So he's, he's, he's instructing them get in there this is how you're to read it you know put me into those into those scriptures and you'll begin to understand who I am they're still frightened by the whole event uh, and they ask him something uh, he asked them something interesting uh, he says you know I'm, I'm flesh and blood I'm alive I'm not a ghost Do you think I am I'm not uh, and then he asks them for something to eat so they give him a fish to eat and he eats it in front of them. So he's telling them, he's showing them, this is physical, uh, this is a reality. Uh, this isn't a dream or hallucination that you're having. Uh, this is a reality. I've showed you my hands and my side. Uh, I'm carrying the wounds in my glorified body. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I'm eating with you. I'm, in, a, in a way, I'm still with you, right? I'm eating with you. He ends, and this is the important part, he ends by commissioning them all. They're not ready to move out yet. They're not ready to get out there and talk. Uh, they have to wait for the coming of the Spirit, for Pentecost. Right? That, that's, that's what's going to enlighten them, the final step of their enlightenment and their conversion. Right? Uh, but he's promising them the Spirit. Uh, and then he tells them that you are to follow after me, the way he puts it. You are witnesses of all these things about me. You're going to witness to that. Okay. So again, whenever we go into the scriptures and we begin to uh, look at long told stories from long ago, uh, we need to always take them 
and let them sit in our own hearts in a very personal way. So maybe uh, today you can think of your own disbelief, not in a bad way, in a, a condemnatory way, but just think of how we struggle. We struggle to understand who Jesus is. Uh, he's giving us a map, and the map is the scriptures, right? Don't, don't run away from the scriptures. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, in there, in the Old Testament, we'll discover who Jesus is. And then when the New Testament comes, when we get into reading the stories about Jesus, we're getting into his, into his life, into his mission in a different way. But that perception, that, that hope, that desire, that expectation of a coming Messiah is all in the Old Testament. And it's there that all our hopes are, arise. The world isn't created yet, it's still working on itself. You know, things are not the way they should be. That's why Jesus talked about a coming kingdom of God. Something wonderful can come, you know, if you convert, if you change your heart. The world can be a different place. It can move, it can evolve closer to what it was meant to be. But we, the way it's put here, we have to be witnesses to Jesus. We have to talk about uh, the suffering, the carrying our sins, uh, the liberation that he brought, uh, the crying for peace so often in the resurrection stories. He keeps saying, peace with you, peace, peace. Bring peace to your heart, bring peace to the world. Uh, but we're to be witnesses of that peace. So today, think about it. Think about what you lack in your own faith in Jesus. Uh, think about uh, what you'd like to know more about him and begin to let that move within you in your own prayer life, in your own reflection today. Uh, this idea that he's with us, He's eating with us at the, at the Sunday meal. All the resurrection stories are on Sundays, reminding us Sunday when the community gathers, when the community eats together, when the community helps each other, when the community reaches out in compassion and healing to one another. I'm there in your midst. And that's what we have to remember today, that he's with us continually, especially when we gather for the Sunday gathering. And in there, we'll meet him. We'll meet him in the scripture. We'll meet him in the meal that we eat, in the bread that we eat, in the, the, the covenant cup that we drink. Uh, we'll, he is with us. So again, make it very personal today, your reflection. They're beautiful thoughts today and very, very powerful. So let's gather our prayers now. I'd like to keep the prayers very simple today. We have so many things that we're praying for. We need to mention all the world issues and the world's problems. Uh, I don't think is necessary. We, we're burdened with that enough. Let's keep it in our prayer today. So Jesus did not want his disciples to remain troubled. So he reassured them of his continuing presence. So now we bring the needs, uh, the troubles, that troubles us, and we bring them before him today. So we pray for the church. May we be witnesses to the risen Christ as we reach out in our works of mercy and kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for our world leaders. May they resist the temptations to power and wealth and embrace the difficult work of justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all of us. May we manifest the peace that Christ bestowed upon his disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for all who are ill, imprisoned, homeless, or neglected. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's lift up our personal intentions for today. Heavenly Father, your Son is revealed in the gifts we bring, in the sacrifice we celebrate, and in the Eucharist we receive. Help us to see him and each other as well, as we make our prayers through him, our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And 
and blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. Lord, receive these gifts from your church. May the great joy you give us come to perfection in heaven. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. For well, this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, 
I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord, look on your people with kindness, <clears throat> and by these Easter mysteries, bring us to the glory of the resurrection. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Mass is ended now. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So I'll see you next week. We'll be celebrating the fourth Sunday of Easter. Have a good week, everyone. <clears throat>